Well, I think we need to go back to the start of the podcast. The first okay. episode, if you remember, I was actually very disappointed that I didn't have COVID because I was sick and had the flu. But before I got the flu, I thought that I had COVID and having partied with uh, partied with Coolio, I wanted to name the first episode Coolio gave me COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Sadly, <laughs> he passed away and he did. I didn't get COVID. I just had a bad flu. Yeah. Poor old Coolio had nothing to do with it. Um, yeah, it would have... Um, would have made the podcast better. Would have made his life better. You know, would have given him a little bit extra reason to hold on. Yeah, I think it would have, you know, extended his uh, his um, stay on Earth. But there you go. He had a he had a time. Where was it that you were you were partying with him? Uh, the casino here. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty cool, though. That he, you know. He he got to achieve his dreams of, of partying with you, and uh, he didn't he didn't get to meet all the gang, but he was there enjoying himself. With so, you know, he's a, it was, uh, yeah yeah. Before before we set records and whatever, but you know, yeah, I'm sure he I'm sure he has seen many of our escapades online before. Yeah, it's, it's always there. sad when we lose a um a listener. Yeah, losing time. So far, is, we've lost the queen. We've lost him. Yeah. Yeah, we also learned year. during the week that the Queen, well, she, her cause of death was released. Yeah, she was shot in a gang drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I thought I didn't read this article, but I thought this is what it was related to. It was an article the other day about um, actress dies uh, by drowning in Bukaki. <laughs> like, oh, I wonder who that was. <laughs> yeah, during a gang drive-by. <laughs> okay, cool. There you go. I, th- I, didn't, I didn't connect those two for some reason, but there you go. There, now it makes sense. So, <laughs> imagine if he did dra- die in such a way, and then having to explain it, it to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> how did you die? The world has changed in two thousand years, Jesus. <laughs> now we do this thing. <laughs> he's and like, I, I know. I tell him, and he's like, I thought you said the world changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So, ah, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be. I mean, look. Hopefully, you don't have. Uh, well, you know, when you die, you don't have embarrassment about the way you died for eternity. That would I be. Know. I think if you're going to be embarrassed about anything, the way you die is probably the least worrying because, like, you're dead. So, yeah, you know, but you, you know. That's that's what I'm hoping is, like if is you the died case. in Bukaki, like it's at least you're you know, dead, like when your family finds out you're in a Bukaki, not I mean the the whole thing of like your parents having to say, you know, how did my how did my son or daughter die? <laughs> well, they were at this thing called a Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a fancy Japanese restaurant. Yeah, yeah. And then they drowned. <laughs> I wonder if you could call, like, you could start a Japanese restaurant called Bukaki's. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they can't stop you without letting out that they know what it is. <laughs> so, or you like call the restaurant Boo B O O, and then Kaki K A Kaki K A K H A K I, as in the shorts. So you're not saying it, but you know it's implied. You're saying- yeah, people who know will know. <laughs> yeah, and then you have like your your big your big um your big dessert is a your famous dessert is like Japanese cream, <laughs> and it's like a <laughs> tiny bit of like cake in the middle, and then cream coming at it from all directions. <laughs> Tell I mean, me, people would not eat at that restaurant. I feel like we give out free business ideas every week. And if people are not taking them off, they should be because these are billion dollar ideas. When when we become Mr. Beast, our version of Beast Burger is going to be Boo Kakis and <laughs> we're going to have the Japanese uh, cream. Yeah. You know, feels feels like a good idea. So I almost feel like, you know how there are those restaurants where there are some restaurants where the chef will cook 
what the chef feels like. Mm-hmm. Well, each week we should have a restaurant somewhere that has themes like this. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a great idea. <laughs> I feel like it would take off. I feel like if if you did porn themed anything, um, people would, would children's go to it. birthday parties. Mostly, I mean, it'd mostly be people you don't want to be serving, but you know, it's still they'd be there to giving you money. It'd be a really good good career. Um, so, so yeah. Well, it does remind me of the Karen's Diner. I don't know if that's got to there yet. I, I've seen what it is online. Yeah, I don't think we have one yet. But um, um yeah. well, yeah, they've been going too far apparently. Um. So like they're being, <laughs> they've been having to go like, so some guy like got really upset and like wouldn't leave and was screaming and swearing at them because they um started talking about his uh, boldness and like how he's going bold. There was one where a guy, a, they called a guy a pedo for um, his daughter that he brought with him. Um, nice. Or at least that's what was alleged. Um, but yeah, apparently like yeah, people are throwing food and they like they even have in their thing like you're not allowed to throw food and and there's a level of what you can go back to them with and I mean, I feel like if you're going to that restaurant, you have to be prepared for whatever. You can't be uh, a moany little bitch. You have to like be able to take some shit. They're going to point out things about you that you won't like. So uh, yeah, it's not like the bad, rude restaurant is going to only focus on positive things for you. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to be like, hey, you've got a lovely, shiny head. They're going to give <laughs> you shit for it. And you've got to be able to throw it back and, and accept and just be like, take this funny side of it. So, yeah. Or just don't go. Fucking bitches. Tony <laughs> bitches going to places and being like, oh, they said a bad word. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people need to need to be more. Uh, chill with these things well we were uh, talking about awkward acting before and um mm-hmm. millie Olcock, who i guess is in the um is in house of dragons sure um she said that extras who had only just met were forced to 69 for 12 hours in the latest episode yep it's not even one of, while they were filming, just just for a sport, <laughs> just, just for like letting, we all just want to watch you just keep going. Twelve this hours. This is part of extra training. <laughs> I mean, like in my younger days, I was an extra on a couple of movies, and uh, you know, you're How spending many a lot hours of time. You sixty nine, like three, four, um, but you know, we you spend a lot of time with nothing happening you're just sitting around waiting to be called onto set and waiting for like the next scene to be happening and you just there's a lot of wasted time throughout the day at least this time they were doing something productive um you know but there you go yeah so they were in a brothel in the um show um and the locate there was a kiss in it um and uh they made sure that the main actors didn't see any of the brothel stuff before going into film for the first time. And she said that our first time walking through the brothel and he's guiding her through the room with all these other bodies. So basically, yeah, they went in to kiss amongst extras who had to 69 for 12 hours straight nude. Great. Great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, it's a, uh, it's a career. Um, <laughs> how how um how far into it is it acceptable to fart if you're uh, <laughs> <laughs> and are you allowed to tell your like 69 partner hey don't eat too much on the uh the cafe here because <laughs> we still have six hours left of this I mean, there's there's a lot of problems with going a full 12 hours in that position. Like you're gonna be you're going to be, um, you know, you're going to have to, even though you've just met, you're going to have to come to some quick arrangements, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to be a horny guy because like, imagine yeah. having to, yeah, be like that for, <laughs> and, 
And at what point does it become impolite not to have an erection? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, or like, is it appropriate to say to one of the other extras, can I swap with you? I don't <laughs> like this one. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to know when they got home from work that day that, you know, their wife or, or husband was like, so how was work? <laughs> You're not going to believe what I had to do today. <laughs> how long were you 69ing? <laughs> how, can I, how come I can taste another woman on your mouth? Well, <laughs> why do you work. smell like pussy? Well, on the way here's what I did work. at work today. <laughs> <laughs> Although, it's also, it gives you one free pass to cheat on your way home from work because you have an excuse. <laughs> well, today I was a, an extra on the Game of Thrones and I had to do this. I was like, what? Don't you? Honey, wait until don't... we want, wait, you and I, we're going to sit down and we're going to watch this episode. I'm going to point myself out. I'm going to show you. This is what I had to do for work. <laughs> and then she's like... It's well, you finished work at five and it's now 10 o'clock. So <laughs> this is my career. Damn it. Don't question it. <laughs> also, why is your scene only on a YouTube channel <laughs> that you just created? Wow. <laughs> With the Pornhub logo over the top. <laughs> and says parody of Game of Thrones. Yeah, you know, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's a lifestyle. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, I can imagine there are some people in that scenario for 12 hours who after like hour four were like, oh, fuck. This Blue is balls. a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think there are some, there's probably more ejaculate than they expected on that set. But Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's got to be very, I mean, yeah, it, it's so long to be spending in that time where... Surely you want to go, have to go to the toilet and yeah. Like yeah. Imagine, imagine you're busting to go to the toilet and you're stuck in that position for, <laughs> especially as an extra where you don't want to like stop everything and tell them, Hey, I really need to go to the toilet. And then they're filming for an extra hour and you're just there like, I really need to piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it would be kind of awkward. I think, um, you know, and you come back then from going to the to the restroom and uh, you find the wrong partner accidentally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, sorry, it's fine. Let's just do it this way. It's, it's, it's better looking. So. Anyway, yeah, good. I mean, I need to get into being an extra again, obviously, because shit's changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, an Australian pub got went under fire for hosting um, a plans to host a wet t-shirt contest on the public ho holiday dedicated to mourning the Queen. To celebrate the life of Queen Lizzie. It says, join us Wednesday night for a special wet t-shirt <laughs> to celebrate life of Queen Lizzie. That's what she would have wanted. So, yeah. you know, she was a big fan of the wet t-shirt contest, <laughs> um, I believe. So, you know, I feel like <laughs> the next line literally says, not particularly sure this is what she would have wanted. <laughs> it is. Come on. <laughs> she wants the people to enjoy themselves and uh, I don't know, have just have fun. So. What else would do that job? But um, the event I, I, organizers I think so. expected to be a packed house, and um, but that maintained the venue had good intentions to honor the late queen. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a mark of respect. Um, <laughs> that's one memorial I would go to. <laughs> so there you go. But no. Uh, <laughs> Is it by any chance an Irish-owned pub? I feel like there's an Irish connection here somewhere. Doesn't <laughs> appear to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of guests, whoever came up with this plan, this is the kind of guest we need to have on the podcast and be like, let's, let's deep, dive, deep, deep dive even into this uh, idea you had and how can we expand it across the world? Um, yeah, although in other places hasn't been taken so well as a fish and chip shop in Scotland appeared to celebrate the Queen's death has had their windows smashed in. 
Wow. Well, you know. So the um, the owner posted a video of herself dancing and cracking open a bottle of champagne while hiding <clears throat> while holding a chalkboard which read, "Liz, Liz, Liz is dead. London Bridge has fallen. Yee who?" <laughs> I mean, you know, um, <laughs> controversial, uh, <laughs> but each to the, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, I don't particularly believe in the lizard people uh trope but there you go that's so, where you need to draw the line that's where i draw the line i'm like lizard people what it's unfair everything else is fine you know <laughs> yeah. well the national federation of fish fryers okay released a Sweet. statement announcing they had revoked her membership oh no <laughs> they said the video is in extremely bad taste and completely against all the values of our organization and industry you hold dear um, I think that's a lawsuit ready to happen right there. I, I guarantee you it does not say in their handbook, you cannot make a video celebrating if the queen dies. I guarantee you it doesn't. No, no, no. Celebrating the lizard queen. Because it, it is actually very specific that that is the reason why this woman was celebrating. It's not because she didn't yeah. like the queen. Because I mean, it says I, on the website, she says that she once received an award from Prince Charles' office. Um, but... She, they, people who visited there have seen chalkboards with conspiracy theories written on them, including anti-vax messages, claims 9-11 was an inside job, and that the the pandemic was faked. Um, so, um, another chalkboard also pictured bearing the message, Queenie Reptilian Death Imminent. So she predicted that the queen was going to die. It's amazing uh, how many people were able to predict that a 96-year-old woman was going to die <laughs> soon. 96-year-old uh, lizard. Thank you very much. I mean, listen, listen. We dis we'll agree to disagree uh, on this. <laughs> so, lizard how people can't die. So disrespect that's, the queen. <laughs> lizard people are, are not going to like croak at 96. They've got a long, long uh, lifespan. So... It's, yeah, that, that's that's it's crazy. She wasn't part of that illustrious uh, um, society. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild that this woman's window got smashed because she thought the queen was a lizard. <laughs> but the question is, was her, you know, battered cod uh, in the top 3%? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, like, there was the best, absolute best fish and chip place. Yeah. But they just happened to, like, have wild conspiracy theories in the window. I like that Personally, idea. Personally, I'm going there anyway for the food because, like, that's the main reason. Yeah. Absolutely. For the food. And then if it's really fucking shitty, smash the windows. <laughs> yeah. Like it's cause of that conspiracy theory. <laughs> Don't stop making the food, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um uh another um venue has offered a nice um promo. Uh, again in Australia. And this one's made international news. So a brothel, a, a brothel offered free lunch special with purchase of a quick, quickie. <laughs> so um, this uh, now the biggest irony is that there was a story about a month or so ago of a rugby league team from this town that wouldn't go to Papua New Guinea because it was too dangerous. And sure. yet they live in this dump of a town where... <laughs> <laughs> they literally, the local brothel ran a um, promotion of um, enjoy a fee and a 15 minute quickie for all for just 150 bucks. The pie and Coke deal. So you got a pie and a can of Coke and a 15 minute quickie for 150 bucks. Nice. Sounds high class. Um. <laughs> People are complaining that um, why can't the, uh, the local, local local supermarkets think of a promotion like this? <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, what I want to know, in a deal like this, I always like to break it down. How much do they usually charge for a quickie? And like, are you paying $20 for a pie or what's... The- <laughs> Let's see how much it is. We'll go to their Facebook page. Ah, interesting. Because I have never been there myself. Well, not this year. Well, I've never been to this area, so... Oh, okay. That's my excuse. Okay. Um... They do have promos for 30 minutes. Um, has it all a luxury spa, smart TV, stock mini fridge, a stripper pole, and four poster bed fit for a king. Well, um, kings are the new thing, so. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Um, <laughs> there's a comment on the, um, the top comment on the thing says, what type of pies? <laughs> It's a good question. It's a yeah. good question. <laughs> you don't want to get stuck with like a vegetarian pie and then you're not. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, what you're, that's what you need to be sure of. I, it better be one of the nice pies, otherwise I'm not going. Uh. <laughs> well, it doesn't say on their Facebook, which seems to promote stuff and has rather risque stuff. So now we're going to have to go to their website. Maybe we'll have to call them and make a booking and find out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hello, I would like one of your special deals with the pie, please. <laughs> uh, procedure. I would like to have a breakdown of... Um... <laughs> now, one Make thing sure that I'm is scary, from which here. does come to mind, is, okay, the first... They have four pictures of their um, escorts. The first one is a very, very well-put-together man. <laughs> okay. Cool. The cool. next one is a strange, I'm going to say, looking woman. Next one is just a woman's body. But then the last one is a very overweight woman. Okay. Some would Sweet. say morbidly obese, be a polite right. way to put it. Um, yeah. Okay. They have, it seems like they have um, a lot of. Uh, locations now the first thing that comes up is the pie and coke deal it doesn't tell you um regular price oh there we go we have pricing sweet so 50 15 minutes is normally 150 dollars. so basically you're getting a free pie and coke nice there you go i'm getting messages from them they have a like a chat box oh no (laughs) wait hold the task (laughs) okay um Ask them, ask them if you finish in like eight minutes, do you get a pro routed <laughs> refund? <laughs> I, wanna, a I only need seven and a half minutes. Can I get it for $75? <laughs> <laughs> I take two minutes to eat, to eat a pie and drink a Coke and five <clears throat> I for. That stuff. All right, we've um. Well, I got an automated message saying, "Hey, babe, welcome to Harlot McKay's live chat." What is my name? Oh, Chris. Christy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being the poor person who has to. I would. I would mess with whoever was chatting. Um, I would be. How like... many people have got to mess with them? I just I feel like if you are if you are the person controlling the chat, like you are the from the business, there's so much. It it does say red. Yeah. (laughs) That's so cool. (laughs) We haven't had a response. So, Um, yeah, I feel like if you're running a business like this, like how many legitimate live chats are you going to get as opposed to like people that are like. They're probably thinking like, oh, fuck, we got a live chat. How do we do this? <laughs> Something. 90 minutes in a VIP suite is 600 bucks. Wow. It's a pretty good rate for a VIP. You don't get VIP anything for oh, 600. We got a response. <gasps> nice. <laughs> you can eat after the booking, hun. That's but not how this that's works. My question. That's, that's not how this works. That's it. I'm officially saying the deal is not worth it. Just tell so, him okay, eating is part of it for me. And I got a um, review. Is this the first time you've chatted with us? Yes. <laughs> you see, it's not. 
I'd answer, but I'm just going to say yes. Were we able to help? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving them a positive rating because there we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I love the Hun. I, it, there is almost certainty that it's some guy sitting in another country. Oh, 100%. It's actually my day job. Um, like normally, <laughs> normally just like answering these uh, these messages on sex oh, websites. It does say underneath, um, price is quoted at the cash rate. Cash is king. They provide discrete on-site ATM and FPOS facilities, which may attract a higher fee. So if you go in there, you're going to pay more, probably more than a pie and a Coke just to get money out. So... Mm. All right, that makes it less attractive in that case. Yeah. What if you bring your own pie? And- <laughs> <laughs> I have one too. <laughs> Do you really think that's enough? Well, I think that um, I'm guessing because it's like a mining town that they like specialize in people that do mining and have a limited lunch break. You're going to maximize your time to eat your pie, drink your Coke for lunch and get one in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're putting in your expenses at the end of the week and they're like, why was it $750 for your lunch? (laughs) (laughs) That's $150 a day. Come on. (laughs) Wait, I got a response. Oh, okay. No, I clicked on another thing and then it went, and open the chat again. Uh oh. Yeah, there's um the first one that came up is not very impressive. Start a new chat and then say, "Can I have two at once?" But be talking about pies. And <laughs> <laughs> we're like, "Geez, the first one was free, and now the second one's like more." Yeah, money. how much for the second? <laughs> Is there a loyalty program? Do I like get one free after every 10th um, visit? Pie. Yeah, free pie. Yeah, do you have a um, card that, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's um, that pub deal. Well, speaking of um, ladies of the... Uh, Afternoon. <laughs> Afternoon. <laughs> Lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I can't find the... Uh, I had the thing there, and now I don't know where it's going. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, okay, sorry. It went over a different page. So, yeah, what I was going to ask is, what did you last get into a fight with a prostitute over? The last time... I believe. Yeah, just the last time, not not the previous 70 times. Yeah, well, it's always the same thing. It's always like, take these fucking handcuffs off me. But anyway. (laughs) uh, (laughs) (laughs) Me is usually stop eating my pie. (laughs) (laughs) Don't have time to buy a second on my lunch break. That is always a problem. It is always a problem. But yeah, no, I mean, usually I find I find I have quite a good relationship. You know, I hold doors open for the ladies and everything, and they, they seem quite um, happy. Um, so, yeah, no arguments, no fights, really too much. What a classy gentleman. Sure. You believe it. Um, well, in Singapore, a gay lang, which is the area where they seem to hang out, prostitute broke the arm of another prostitute after fighting with their rival because they were charging $20 more for their services. I mean, just raise your prices <laughs> um, or lower your prices, whichever way it was going. But uh, all right, that's, I mean, you know, that's a good competitive business. Um, so the woman known only as Susan spoke to Shin Min Daily News and said that she was waiting for customers. And her competitor, a woman in her 40s, offered customers... Does it say how old she was? No. Um, So, yeah, a woman in her 40s offered customers a lower rate of $20, which ticked her off because she would end up earning less. Susan said the younger women usually charge for about $50 for a session for half an hour, 
And for older women like herself, they charge the same but pay for the $15 room rate, meaning they take home about $35 per session. Okay. Susan then confronted her competitor about her rates, and the latter then started scolding her as they got into an argument. Um, the other woman then allegedly threw a bottle of mineral water at her, and Susan then picked up the bottle and threw it back. The fight escalated, and the other woman then picked up a plastic chair to attack Susan, who tried to back away but was then kicked from behind by a man, and she fell down. She okay. said that the man who kicked her was one of the minders looking after the prostitutes from her competitor's brothel. Down on the ground, Susan then told her rival that she was going to call the police, and the latter then allegedly told her that she was not scared and her customers would get Susan if she did so. Susan suffered injuries on her right arm and knee from the fall in the altercation, and she later called the police, but eventually decided not to pursue the matter and sought medical attention. The next day, she felt more pain from her injuries and called an ambulance before being told at the hospital that she had fractured her right arm and would need to put on a cast. She was then given two weeks of hospitalization leave. And she then requested for a cost to be removed after a week, and she spent $500 on her medical expenses. What I want to know is, why is Hollywood not working on this picture? <laughs> this, should be, this should be a blockbuster <laughs> for the ages. Uh, <laughs> prostitute wars. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, what I want to know is, why is it so cheap? Um, Another one was $150, including a pie and a Coke. Yeah, yeah we're twenty dollars. <laughs> even at the even at the fifty dollar rate, you're making a substantial saving, and you can go and get a Big Mac afterwards, and you're fine. Uh, so yeah, you can you can order ten pies, ten cokes, and have this, and still end up ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds to me like Singapore is the place to go for your next family vacation um bring the kids and the, well the the next part of it is um that uh the um that that website it says you can if you call them if you have any news you get a free gift of up to fifty dollars so you actually earn more to just call them and come up with a story <laughs> <laughs> than you do for one session working as a prostitute there. Yeah. I feel like if you're going to get $50 per story, you could write the whole fucking paper uh, for them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few stories for you, pal. 50 bucks each, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I think once again, we may have found a loophole in some of these stories where there is a little bit of a proof that this isn't exactly what it turns it was. Yeah, it might be bullshit. I'm just, but fifty dollars. I mean, $50. honestly, if it's either that or suck a dick, I'd be like, <laughs> all right, make up a story. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a better way of making fifty. Find a push. <laughs> <laughs> I created this story as I was sucking a dick. <laughs> Uh, you know, well, everyone hates their job, but you know. Yeah. Well, sometimes you also hate your um the people you hire. So a man went to Thailand and um hired an escort that turned out not to be female. That happens occasionally. Yeah. So this guy when it, it says now this kind of sounds a little similar to one that we had before, but Whenever I travel, I like to hire a woman to accompany me and sometimes put me to sleep. Ah, oh, yeah. Good idea. So I was looking around the internet and I had this woman on WeChat. Normally on my Bangkok trip, I see escorts every w once in a while. And this girl turned out to be a trans woman. Her WeChat profile said nothing about this. I was honestly quite rude and told her she tricked me and she should refund me the hotel room I had already paid. <laughs> I took a, I had to book a separate hotel as I did not want my friends who were traveling with me to find out. He tried to convince me saying there's no difference to give it a try, but I was fuming and just walked out. 
Now, the one problem with this story is that if you're hiring them to sleep with you because you need to be put to sleep, why would it matter if it was? Because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to be poked by a certain appendage. At the, yeah, but well, he, he only wants to be put to sleep. He doesn't want anything to happen. Yeah, but you know, if he's being the little spoon, he's going to feel something he didn't expect. <laughs> Bonus points, I guess. Um, he said, after I told her no way that I would accept him or her or whatever, she banged the door of my hotel room. And as I peep through the peephole on the door, it was literally a gigantic gorilla man that was even bigger in size than me. The situation was so bad that the security was alerted after he was continuously banging the door. Other room tenants complained and the security brought it down. The reception so then from... called my room and asked if I knew him. I feigned ignorance and said that I did not know him slash her. The reception said that the escort showed me a profile picture of my WeChat. <laughs> but thankfully, I do not use my real photo or name for my WeChat account. The escort right. was then told by the security to leave or they would have to call the police to come down. Well, if we've learned any lesson, it's do not use your own name or photo on WeChat. Yeah, use one of your friends. <laughs> Moral of the story is... <laughs> if we learn anything, and we learn very little from this story, but if we learn anything, it was... True. <laughs> when hiring dodgy escorts off WeChat, <laughs> always as you do. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, ask them to bring a pie and a Coke, because you're going to get hungry overnight. Uh, it's yeah, it's necessary these days. Now we know it's an option in some places. It should be everywhere. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, the, the the weird part about this is the 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 person <laughs> the locked <weird> up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The only weird part about this is yeah, yeah. the person rocked up at the door. But how were they talking about the fact that it was a woman? trans, whatever. Like, it, it, like this <laughs> yeah, the part where they're outside sense. the door is like, as what? they got to the door, they decided to set to message and say, by the way, I'm not a woman. <laughs> At which yeah. point, why would they say it then? And why not say it earlier or wait until they got there? Yeah, I feel like just before entering the room, you would want to maybe have done your research or or have all the information, you know, but I don't know. I mean, to me, it sounds like just a, a regular Tuesday, fun times, uh, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine if that was your regular occurrence, you have to explain the police why <laughs> this is not me that is a different wechat to the one that you showed me yesterday <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> although that is an epic prank on someone is to five days in a row organize a trans <laughs> prostitute <laughs> So I know just the guy to set up with that. I think we both know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, five days in a row, we see a separate, different trans prostitute. <laughs> all, all you have to do is hire actors because it's like, even when the police come, it's not like they're going to arrest a the person. They're just going to choose them away. <laughs> yeah, you know, people are. <laughs> Imagine, or you do it with hotel, the same hotel, like five times in the one day, and then the reception. <laughs> Sorry, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Like, what? <laughs> no. But again, I told you it's not me. <laughs> Someone's doing a prank on me and uh, it's like, oh, okay. Like, why did the last one spend two hours in your room? I don't know. I was trying to, I was trying to ask them who set them up to this. I was being polite. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Anytime a trans prostitute bangs on my door, I have to let them in, explain the good word of the Lord to them. It's Jesus one would work. Of course, of course. Um, well, a success story on those lines, just to counteract this, sure. a guy used... Well, well, it's written from him, so I won't read the title. But anyway, it, it says, I met a girl on Tinder and we agreed to meet up. One hour before the date, she texted me saying that she was stuck somewhere and asked if I could send her $50 to grab over. Grab being like a the Asian version of Uber. Mm -hmm. My first instinct was that something was a bit fishy. Grab is not cheap, but surely it can't be $50, right? Anyway, she has no money for grab. Can't she just take public transport? Our public transport... Um, maybe crap at times, but one hour is enough to get to the city center from almost anywhere in Singapore. Sure. Um, this was six months ago. Uh, he says, so many questions. Nevertheless, her po her pictures looked hot. So my small head took over and I paid up anyway. <laughs> that was six months ago. Today, I would consider us to be a steady couple. Admittedly, my girlfriend does have some financial issues now and then, but I would rather have a girlfriend who is cute and blur about money rather than a girlfriend who is clever and scheming with money. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you uh, know. Sometimes you need to send money right before the date and it actually works out. I mean, you know, I guess it works sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, just just take those chances, send that money beforehand, because it worked for this one guy, so it's going to work for everyone. Everybody, scientific everyone. fact. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, the, um, the buy of the century is for sale. Um, okay. Possibly the most amazing thing celebrity item you could buy ever i'll give you that clue that it's a celebrity item okay what do you think it is um i don't know a, a kardashian or something uh just like literally a person to <laughs> a cast off um i don't know is it something it's going to be something weird because we're talking about it so um, it'd be like more along the lines of a toilet that the kardashians used once but not that i mean that would sell <laughs> Bruce <laughs> <laughs> the whatever 1986 Olympics toilet that he <laughs> took a post shit after winning the gold medal I mean I, there's I someone out there man looking for that, that. <laughs> I don't know I don't know but someone, someone wants that on shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, so in terms of what the item is, I'm going to say something like, um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's in the Northwich and Winsford Guardian. They know it's important news. Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it someone's, um, someone's underwear or something like that? Like a, a Winston Churchill underwear? I don't know. That would be even more classy than this. <laughs> a toilet block near where Harry Styles worked as a teen is up for sale. A, a what now? <laughs> that is the headline. Toilet block near where Harry Styles worked as a teen up for sale. A disused public toilet block near the bakery where Harry Styles worked as a teenager is up for sale for £100,000. I mean, if he hadn't worked there, would it be less money or <laughs> <laughs> is this a property market gone that fucking crazy or what's going on? <laughs> well, this is how you really, really shoehorn in. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm selling something from now on, it's going to be like something used in the same country as Bono. Uh, <laughs> like he was here while I used this. Maybe. Autographed in the toilet where Bono once took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> we've been to many of the same places you know Just, I feel like that's a possibility so um. Um, it says the facilities <laughs> are described as having the potential to become a new commercial enter enterprise toilet block is adjacent to the Don Alberto Italian restaurant and it goes into further detail of exactly where it is um, 
And yeah, it doesn't. Um, it does say from a quote from the chairman of the estate agency. While this does seem an absolutely deliberately broken up, crazy price for a commercial property, one has to consider the increasing property popularity of Holmes Chapel and the potential to transform this plot of land into a new commercial enterprise. I mean. Let's just say you turned it into a new commercial enterprise. Everyone's going to be walking in going, I can't believe this used to be a toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Did Harry Style <laughs> once work near? Yeah. yeah. Potentially might have pissed then. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> this well, not well, even like the saying that he did yeah. go there. More likely more like thousands and thousands of other strangers like just just randos just fucking Homeless destroying people. it yeah, <laughs> after, after a curry or something. No, Harry Styles worked nearby by this thing. Fuck off. But um, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like the owner is definitely pushing the Harry Styles vibe on this one. Yeah. Well, finally, you um, you referenced uh, the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. Um and Ray J reveals Chris Jenner made him and Kim Kardashian reshoot sex tapes three times. <laughs> so according to Ray J, her mother right. made them reshoot their sex tape three times. Cause they reviewed it and were like, no, this one's not good. <laughs> Do another Moaning one. isn't good enough here. <laughs> At this That's time, turn actually. 24 <laughs> degrees towards the camera <laughs> and say the line, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But yeah, um, that's fucking weird. Uh, no, Chris did take a lie detector and where she was asked questions about it, including whether um, she helped uh, make it. And it was determined that she was telling the truth that she didn't. Okay. However, Ray J claims otherwise. And he, the rapper claimed that Chris asked for three versions of the Notorious sex tape and chose the one that would benefit Kim the most when released. Always good to have I mean, your mom check yeah. which of your sex tapes is going to be released. If you, if you want to guarantee being a superstar, the best way to do it is to have three versions of your sex tape so that you can pick the best one. No, no, no. So that your mother can pick the best one. Yeah, you know, you know, that's that's also an added feature. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like I, I have a new newfound respect. For the, the yeah, Ray J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. They um, three three different versions. I wonder I, now I want to see the other cuts. Not that I've seen the the one that was released, of course, but um, yeah, it sounds like there's director's cuts, there's special editions that can be brought out, all kinds. So uh, yeah, yeah, look at all the money there, um, leaving on the table, which is unusual, you know. I mean, they'll forget where their apartments are, but they or that they own apartments in Beverly Hills and shit, but they they don't usually forget to take the money off the table. Listen. If there's anything we learned from this, it's if you gave your mother three sex tapes that you made, <laughs> then you too could own an apartment in Beverly Hills that you forget about. That's true. That's you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> that story would make you blow up, literally. So that is the um, title of my new book. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, on that note, I have three videos to film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think I should record three myself. Uh, <laughs> just by myself, just my own sex tape, just me. <laughs> Mom, what do you think of these? <laughs> <laughs> Which one has the best angle? <laughs> just Here's me getting bukkakied. <laughs> Here's me getting from the right side. <laughs> Again, by myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, we've learned a lot today. We've 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 come across a lot of um, new new roles that we can take, and 
<laughs> I'm scarred for life as I usually am each week. So I'm happy. <laughs> You've got life lessons. That. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll leave it there and uh, we'll catch you next week, man. Yep. All right. <laughs> cool. See you next See week. See ya. <laughs>